Hello, hello. It's almost seven o'clock. Uh, hope you guys are tuning in for our second edition of uh, Zen Gary Kitchen's Instagram Lives. So we're going to be doing this every Monday, seven o'clock. Seeing some people hopping on. Hello, Krista. Brandseed, hello. Great. Well, today our topic is faux meats. So last week we talked all about dairy replacements. We talked about sour cream. Hey, Francine. Um, and we did some Parmesan. We made um, some cashew cream. All those recipes are still available on our website and you can go and check out that Instagram live from last Monday, which is still in our feed. So check that out. Fatima, hello. Thank you so much for joining in today. We have seen an explosion in the faux meat market in the last five years. I think it's amazing that we have so many different options. You can have vegan pepperoni, all kinds of vegan sausages. They have vegan ground round. Um, there are products that you can use to replace everything. Hey, everybody. Um, but I want to just talk a little bit about some more natural and affordable alternatives that we can use in the kitchen on a daily basis to replace meat in our cooking. So I, in preparation for this class, made you guys a, a little cheat sheet so you can go up to our link tree bio and you can download this cheat sheet. That was a really great idea from someone who participated last week in our Instagram live. So I've made you guys a cheat sheet with all of the faux meats or meat alternatives that I'm going to be talking about today. We talk a little bit about uh, how many grams of protein there are in there and then how can you use them. So first of all, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't entered yet, we have a Vitamix giveaway going on on our feed right now. So I hope everybody has entered that. So give me a little hands up if you've entered our um, Vitamix giveaway. We've had uh, a lot of participation. I'm super excited for someone who's going to win that Vitamix and I think it's pretty awesome that Vitamix has been around for a hundred years now and um, so it's I think it's a time to celebrate this awesome company that makes these amazing kitchen tools. Awesome and then another announcement that we have we have a brand new flavor that just launched on our online store this week, this weekend, our blueberry lavender flavor, which is a nice mix of fruity, umami taste topped with uh, dried lavender flowers. It's beautiful on a cheese board, or you can use it, or someone who used it to make some amazing lavender blueberry cupcakes. So check those out. Uh, we shared them, I think, last yesterday, but they look amazing. So that blueberry lavender cheese is now available on our online store. Also, since we've got this new flavor coming out and Christmas is over, we are liquidating our cranberry pistachio cheese. So I know you guys loved that one. It was in Costco, came to a lot of different retailers, but unfortunately, the retailers no longer have it. We still have a few left in our facility. So we are doing a two for one sale on those cranberry pistachios on our online store. So don't miss out on that because we're not making any more. It's just while supplies last. We also have some new bundles that we launched that include that new blueberry lavender flavor. So it's kind of a lover's bundle. So it's meant to be everything you need to put together a really easy charcuterie board at home. It also includes um, the Sausage Party Salami, which I tried at Toronto Veg Fest in November, and it was 
amazing. So we got our hands on some of that sausage party salami that we're putting into the lovers charcuterie bundles. And then watch out, we're gonna have our brunch bundles launching hopefully next weekend. So that's gonna have lots of fun stuff in it and uh, I know you guys are gonna love it. So let's get into our faux meats. Um, the first thing that I use on a very regular basis is pulses. So lentils or chickpeas, beans, they're full of fiber and protein and they're really, really versatile. I don't know if you guys saw our shepherd's pie recipe that we did just before Christmas. It was amazing and what I used to make them is simply brown lentils. So you can get uh, dried brown lentils. They're super economical. I think you get two pounds for less than five dollars. You could probably do better at a bulk food store. You can buy them, store them in your little jars. They're ready for whenever you need to uh, use them. So I would soak these before using them, but there's also the canned variety. So if you're in a rush, just get yourself canned beans and those will all be already be cooked. You just have to drain them, rinse them, and then use them in your favorite recipe. So for the lentils and beans, I would use them anywhere that you would want to use a ground, a vegan ground or a ground beef kind of thing. So meatballs, uh, lentil loaf, uh, you can make a bolognese sauce with them. You can do burgers with them. I make a pretty convincing tuna salad with chickpeas. Um, and then one of the things that I use very often is just your regular old refried beans. These are great for tacos, for bowls, for burritos. I make a great uh, nacho dip with this. I just layer the refried beans on the bottom and then I put some salsa and then I put, uh, you can use your vegan sour cream on there. You can use our queso sauce on there. And then you just pop it in the oven until it's warm. Top it with some uh, chopped lettuce and green onions. You can put olives on there and it's super tasty dip. You just dip in your nachos and it's, it's really healthy, no fuss dinner uh, for movie night one night. So beans generally have about nine grams of protein per 100 grams of beans and to put that into perspective let's just say uh, a chicken breast or a piece of pork or beef are about 26 27 grams per 100 grams so for beans you're looking at about nine grams you got lots of healthy fibers in there too so it'll really fill you up and i think that's one of the things that we look for with those meat alternatives is, is that really satisfying uh feeling uh, full feeling those those comfort meals that we are used to eating from when we're, we were children and our parents were taking care of us. So beans, my number one go-to. Second one that people may not think of all the time as a meat replacement is mushrooms. We make a great bolognese sauce from the Fresh Food Full Hearts cookbook by Jillian Harris and her cousin Tori Wezer. So uh, I, if you have that cookbook, try the bolognese sauce, it's amazing. There's a lot of mushrooms in there and the mushrooms, the chopped mushrooms are what give it that really meaty texture. But you can do some really fun things with mushrooms. Obviously what comes to mind first is a portobello mushroom burger. So that's super easy, just put some olive oil, brush some olive oil on each side of your mushroom, pop it in your frying pan, a little salt and pepper, and that's a great burger replacement, super easy. And uh, one thing that we made just this weekend, which was delicious, was a shiitake mushroom banh mi. That was in uh, Isa Does It cookbook, and I highly recommend it. The sauces were great. Always, you know, those sauces are really important. That's where you get your flavor from, but you get the texture from your mushrooms. So shiitake mushrooms, the ones we used in the banh mi sandwich, we really just fried them in a little bit of oil and soy sauce until they were soft and then layered them in the sandwich with the sauces and the pickles. And it was, it was really delicious. 
So shiitakes are one of my favorite mushrooms to use. They have a really meaty, chewy texture. Another one that I love is the oyster, king oyster mushrooms. These ones are great if you want to do, say, a vegan scallop. You just cut them into these little rounds like this, and then you can score them and saute them, and they turn a nice golden color, and they really resemble scallops. So there's a recipe on our website for vegan scallops and fettuccine alfredo, and it was one of my favorite, favorite recipes. So if you have some king oyster mushrooms lying around, I totally recommend that you try that out. Another thing you can do with them is you cut a little hole in the middle and I've seen people use them to make vegan calamari. I personally haven't tried it yet. I don't know why, because it sounds amazing, but uh, I'm gonna have to try that out. Uh, another thing you can do with these king oyster mushrooms is you just take a fork and then you kind of shred them into this texture that's like pulled pork or pulled chicken. So you get these little flakes of mushroom and then you can add your sauce in, saute them in a pan with your sauces and they are very convincing as a meat replacement for in a pulled pork sort of way for tacos or sloppy joes or something like that. So give that a try. So if anyone used their mushrooms as a meat replacement, did you think of that? Or is it something that you think of mushrooms more as a vegetable? So answer in the comments there if you think mushrooms are a good replacement for meat. And they're also pretty eco economical. Another thing that everybody I'm sure has heard of is tofu. So tofu is very underrated meat replacement, I think. Uh, it's so versatile. It doesn't really taste like much, so you need a really great sauce. Yes, eating the rainbow, mushrooms, yes, mystery slime. So um, one of the things I look for in a tofu, this is one of my favorite um, varieties, brands. The other one that I really like is the Soul Cuisine because I need my tofu to be sprouted. I find it easier on my stomach. Non-sprouted uh, tofu is a little harder to digest, so I recommend really looking for uh, a sprouted tofu. And so this one is Wildwood. I think it's from uh, the US. The Soul Cuisine one, though, is Canadian brand, so you can look for that. And so many options for using the tofu. You can cut it for sandwiches, um, we use it in a bolognese sauce. I use it to make a ricotta. Uh, I think I mentioned that in the last live class. Uh, you can use it to make a tofu scramble, eggs benny. All you really need to do is season it and cook it. I haven't tried it in my air fryer yet, but that's next on my list. So you can just toss it in a little bit of cornstarch and then fry it up in some oil and then add your sauce. Lots and lots of ideas. I went through uh, on Pinterest and pinned some of my favorite recipes, and I link to that Pinterest board on our cheat sheet. Uh, so you have to download the cheat sheet for it to be clickable, just because uh, I couldn't get those clickable links in the post on our website. So just download it, and then you can click through to all of the recipes that as I've included there. So for the tofu and tempeh and edamame, that is uh, about eight grams per 100 grams for tofu, and there's more protein in tempeh. So tempeh has about twice as much, about 19 grams for 100 grams. Tempeh is a bit of an acquired taste. Not everybody uh, loves it, but there's one brand that I really, really love, which is called Noble Bean. It's easier to find on the Quebec side, unfortunately. I think it's, it was a company that started in Ontario, and now I think they're owned by Ovive, which is a restaurant in Montreal uh, that you may be familiar with. Has anyone been to Ovive? It's one of those classic vegan restaurants. They have uh, some really great meals, and I always add the tempeh instead of the tofu, just because I find the tempeh easier to digest. So with tempeh, you're really gonna to wanna to steam it because it has a little bit of bitterness to it. And when you steam it, it, it gets rid of that 
bitterness. Um, I also really like the flavored tempeh. You can get tempeh bacon. There's one by Noble Bean that is called a smoky onion flavor, I think, and that one is really, really good. So experiment with tempeh, and if you don't find one that you like right away, don't get discouraged because tempeh is really great. The texture is, is firmer than tofu and really has like a meaty bite to it. And of course, you can always add edamame to your poke bowls or your buddha bowls or your power bowls. It's a, it's a great alternative for protein, not necessarily a meat alternative, but um, it's, it's great for protein. Another one that I use is nuts, obviously. So when I make my lentil loaf or my shepherd's pie, I always add in some walnuts. So chop them up uh, pretty fine and then sprinkle them into your lentil loaf or your shepherd's pie. And every once in a while you really get that meaty, nutty bite. And it's a great texture because I find the, the lentils can get really soft. So, so having those nuts in there gives it more of a, a meaty texture. So you can use walnuts or um, pecans or pistachios, but I have one recipe that I've linked to on the cheat sheet, which is a amazing taco meat alternative made with walnuts. So I recommend giving that a try. Uh, you can link to it in the cheat sheet. And then another thing we did just this weekend when my son was here is we did tacos with jackfruit. So if you haven't tried jackfruit yet, it's a pretty cool fruit. So I usually buy it in a can like this. And this one I got at TNT Market. So you can find this at Asian markets. You can buy the big fruit. They're like, they're bigger than watermelons and they kind of have like bumps all over them. And, and I've never purchased one raw like that. One day I will because it looks super fun, but I'm afraid I'm going to have like jackfruit for years. So I just buy these little cans. Got to make sure that you get it in brine and not in syrup because you don't want the sweet variety that's used for desserts. This is the more savory variety, so you want to make sure that you get it in brine. And they look like these little triangles, like pineapple almost. They have the same kind of texture and then they, as they cook, they rip apart into these little flakes or and then it kind of resembles um, a pulled pork again so all you need to do is put it into a frying pan with some oil and then add your favorite sauce i think i used when we did the tacos we had gotten a little taco kit that came with the seasoning so we used that seasoning and then i added some good food for good taco sauce and it was really, really good. So I recommend trying the jackfruit. So I think this can was probably about four or five bucks for uh, the can. Um, Cause sometimes those jackfruit pre-prepared things are just jackfruit mixed with the sauce and they can be like seven, eight bucks. So I find it just as easy to make my own. So another thing that uh, I really love, it's a little more time consuming, but a lot of your vegan sausages and vegan salamis and pepperonis and those kinds of things are made with something called seitan, S-E-I-T-A-N or T-E-N. And uh, basically what that is, is the protein from wheat flour. So if you isolate the wheat flour, the wheat gluten is what makes stretchiness. So when you get a concentrated amount of that vital wheat gluten and you mix it with water, it gets really stretchy and it gives you that texture, that really meaty texture. So you could do things like roasts or sausages or um, uh, pastrami's or little steaks or whatever you want you can find those recipes anywhere basically all it is is you mix it with you mix the vital wheat gluten 
Bob's Red Mill is the one that I usually get, but I think you can probably get it at bulk stores as well. And uh, you mix it with water and some flavorings. So some vegetable broth, tomato paste, sometimes for the color. Nutritional yeast often uh, is added in there. And then you'll either boil it or steam it. So steaming can be a little um, less risky because sometimes if you boil it and it's not the right, you haven't kneaded it enough, then you can get it kind of falling apart in your, in your water. So steaming it, I recommend over boiling it, but uh, we've, I've made some really great things with that. I saw Edgy Veg has some chicken wings that she's made with that and I think it's pretty cool. She uses a little sugar cane stick, I think, for the chicken bone and then she makes these um, really cool chicken wings. We have a recipe for seitan wings on our website that was developed by our friends over at Fox and Farrow and it's served with an awesome cheesy sauce made with our aged cumin cheese, so I highly recommend that. I think in that recipe she's mixed the seitan with tofu and jackfruit, so she's got a little bit of everything going on, but the texture is really, really amazing. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about are these soy curls. Has anyone ever tried these soy curls? Super uh, easy, can be a challenge to find. I found these at Little Joe Berry's in Ottawa. So if you're in Ottawa, you can check out Little Joe Berry. She has a great collection of vegan products that she's curated from all over the place. So these are little soy based curls and they come like this, they're dried. So what you have to do is soak them in warm water for about 10, 15 minutes and then you squeeze out the extra water and it comes to resemble like little chicken and it's perfect texture, it's very like spongy and all you need to do is add on your favorite sauce like a orange sauce or, or teriyaki sauce. Again, I found a lot of recipes on Pinterest and I pinned them to our faux meats board. So take a moment, go over to Pinterest, follow that board. There's over 50 recipes on there, all faux meats that you can make yourself with these ingredients that are a little less expensive than you might pay for your pre-prepared vegan sausages, say, or burger patties. So. I'm dying to hear what your favorite meat alternatives are. There are so many different options and uh, if you have tried these soy curls and you have a favorite recipe, just pass it on and we can share it in, I will update our faux meats post on the website and include some of those recipes that uh, you guys send me. So if you guys have any questions that are about faux meats or suggestions on what to do with your jackfruit. Hey, local plant eater, nice to see you. All right, yes, it's true that the soy curls can be hard to find and I looked on uh, Amazon, you can get them on Amazon, but when I saw them at Little Joe Berry's, I just grabbed them up. So. I'm sure you could probably get them at Vegan Supply if you're out west or um, uh, The Good Rebel if you're in Toronto as well. If you have any other uh, secret stashes of soy curls, let me know. Hello. So one thing that I found when I was at TNT the other day, if you put soy curls in broth instead of water, it'll help with their flavoring. Ooh, good tip. That's from Eating the Rainbow. Jennifer, I love pulled barbecue sliders with jackfruit. Great idea. Love sliders, especially for the kids. They love those little bite-sized foods. They're just more fun. They're just more fun that way. So one of the things I found that I'm pretty excited about, and I've been looking at um, Edgy Veg made 
uh, fish and chips with these, which are banana blossoms. So apparently banana blossoms are a great alternative for fish in some recipes and I'm going to give that a try one of these days. Awesome. Wow. That's about all I have for you guys tonight. I'm recovering from a little flu that I caught from my grandkids um, last week. So uh, I'm really excited that we got to be here for our second live event. And make sure that you go on the online store, check out our new blueberry lavender cheese. And we're gonna have some really fun flavors coming to you this year. We have about four new flavors that we're gonna rotate into our online store. So we wanted to bring you guys some new things. Um, and our Zambassadors got a sneak peek of those in their last packages. So I know some people have had a little, uh, a chance to give it a try. So thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to go enter the Vitamix giveaway if you haven't yet. And next week, something really exciting. Mel Bowden's from Grow Your Roots Cafe. If anyone has ever, uh, if you're in Ottawa and if you remember Grow Your Roots Cafe in Canada, unfortunately it, it closed down at the beginning of COVID, but she's reinventing herself now and making some amazing prepared um, packaged foods, vegan foods, obviously. So we are gonna be doing our first brunch cook-off. So join us on Monday, next week, 7 p.m., and then you'll get to vote on which brunch dish wins. So who's gonna get the bragging rights, right? So Mel, if you're listening, get ready, because I'm gonna bring my A game. Thanks guys. Thanks for joining me for another edition of Zengary Kitchen Live.